Welcome to Ingrid's World. I'm your host, Ingrid Paratiklin. On this show, you will meet Lorraine Jackson, President, and Penny Cortez, first Vice President of Prince William County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. They are college-educated women engaged in providing community service work in Prince William County, Manassas, and Manassas Park. Their activities include Adopt-A-Family, Delta Academy, as well as the Delta Gems. Our next guest is Ambassador DeLisi, who served the government of the United States for 34 years as a diplomat, capping his distinguished career representing President Barack Obama as the American ambassador to the Republic of Uganda from 2012 to 2015. Currently, he is executive director of Soraway, a charitable foundation dedicated to helping the people of Nepal recover from the devastating earthquake of 2015. Then we will speak with Isis Wallace and Alyssa Hicklin and test their knowledge of Dr. Martin Luther King. This show spotlights service and what we do for others, which is a key to an abundant life. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Great having you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Ms. Jackson, let's start off with okay. you. Let's talk a little bit about yourself. Okay. I heard that you are, used to be a Fairfax County employee. I definitely. <laughs> I retired from Fairfax County. Yes. Well, most of my career has been with Fairfax County government. Oh, my goodness. 27 years. Congratulations. <laughs> All of Best it. Best county in the world. <laughs> I agree. And most of it has been in land development services. I'm a management analyst. Oh my goodness. And yes, I currently oversee all the procurement and land development services. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What great organization. <laughs> I'm stunned. <laughs> and, it's a small world. It's a small world. It's a good work. It's a good work. Yes. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I currently work with the federal government um, and I have my bachelor's degree in criminal justice as well as a master's degree in liber liberal arts and security management. My goodness. Yes. Outstanding yes. people here. Mm -hmm. Well, give me a little history on your outstanding sorority. Let's talk a little bit about the Deltas. Okay. Well, the Prince William County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was chartered uh, December the 1st, 1984, with as the number 740 chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority as an organization at a, as a whole. Um, our mission is, you know, to service the community of Prince William County, Manassas Park, and um, Manassas City. We started off with 15 charter members and six chapter members at that time, which now we have grown to over 250 oh, members. 200. Yes, 250. <laughs> Currently, yes, yes. Congratulations. Yes, yes, so, yeah, we've grown a lot since 1984. Wow. Yes, yes. Outstanding. Now, um, what I really just love about it is that the community service programs that you do, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, we have, as you mentioned, we have several different programs um, that meet the unique needs of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, adopt a family, Snack in a Sack, which we really are oh. proud of. There are a lot of kids that um, have meals through the, um, Monday through Friday, and then we fill in the gap for those kids that, that, that don't have meals right. from Friday to Sunday. Oh my goodness. And we've been um, providing um, Snack in a Sack for approximately three years. And then we have other programs. We've adopted a shelter. We, um, we adopted a highway. We have clothing drives. We have entrepreneurship workshop. And then we partner with different organizations that have similar missions, such as ours. Yes. For example, the Salvation Army, yes. the NAACP, and then we support the American Cancer Society. Um, we participate in Relay for Life every year, wow. and the St. Jude Walk. And then we also remember NWCP and the Chamber of Commerce in Prince William County. We do a lot. <laughs> and the theme this year for the next two years is a sisterhood that seeks every opportunity to service the unique needs in the community. A sisterhood. A sisterhood. A sisterhood. I, and that's what it's all about, yes. isn't it? Yes. Now, one of the first things that I just remember just fondly, um, goodness, I remember Joe, uh, Colonel Bonnerese. Yes. yes. 
oratorical for our viewers out there. Mm -hmm. I had to tell you that when I would hear uh, Colonel Bonnery speak, mm -hmm. I was just blown away. And please tell them, our viewers, what I'm speaking about. I'm talking about what? You're talking about our MLK Oratorical Youth Contest oh my goodness. competition. Um, that competition is to honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And it's especially the oratorical piece that we really emphasize with our students in the in the students that participate in the uh, organization or in the competition. Right. Right. And so it's a competition with middle school and high school mm -hmm. students that mm -hmm. are held um, throughout the year. And for their participation, the students actually can receive anywhere from 50 to $500. And they also wow. are recognized um, at, uh, with a reception. Oh as my well. goodness, that's yes. outstanding. Absolutely. And I've heard some amazing speeches. I'll just say, what's amazing about the program is that. And today, we think that the youth are not in touch mm -hmm, with what's going mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. through this oratorical contest, we know right. that that's not true. That's not true. They are really in touch with what's going on. And um, Martin Luther King will be very proud that they are carrying on his legacy. And very proud of the Deltas for absolutely. keeping it full. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> without, a, without question. How many youth have participated? Uh, we have approximately 25 per year, so over wow. the last 26 years of the oratorical contest, we've had approximately 600 students that have Wonderful. participated. Mm -hmm. Because the program, the MLK, started 31 years ago, and then we added the oratorical piece, which has been running again for 26 years since 1990. Oh my goodness! Yes. And I, you know, and I, when I think of when I'm there, it's like the whole centerpiece of that event. Mm -hmm. you know, when those young people, you know come to the stage and it's almost like a hush. You don't even yeah, have to is. tell anybody to be yes. quiet. <laughs> yes. it's, it's amazing. Yes. And then the skill sets that they learn participating in this, they go on to some amazing careers and we've had, um, I was talking to someone out in the lobby um, earlier, she was talking about how her daughter um, was invited to speak at the White House. So we're very proud of the accomplishments of not when they're participating in the program, but what they do with the skill sets afterwards. And see, and that's what it's all about. Um, it's giving them the confidence. Yes. You know, and because I don't know, that's all. A huge audience. How many people do you generally have there? We have anywhere between. 2,500 and 3,000 people mm -hmm. that so are in attendance. In yes. yes. 3,000 yes. people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I don't know if I could do that. I was about to say, <laughs> yes. the studio is kind of easy. Yes. It's just us. <laughs> you know, we're just talking. Right. But 3,000. Yes. That's yes. powerful. So I want them, uh, I want our viewers to really get involved in seeing this because mm -hmm. it's an amazing event. Um, what would you say to our viewers out there why they should be coming to see the MLK event? They should be coming to see the MLK event because our young students are there, they will inspire you, they will energize you, and they will remind you um, of the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, which which is the what the contest is about or the competition is about. But it's inspiring, it's invigorating and energizing. So that's why the community should participate. And, and, and that's what it's all about there. Um, and I, I, I would I would hate to be a judge on this. How do you get your judges to do Because that would be so hard. Well, we engage the community to get involved okay. in the program. We have um, eclectic judges involved. They're educators, they're attorneys, they're business owners, and uh, we just have to make sure that they're not affiliated with the school systems that the school uh, that the, the, um, the students are participating in. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, and um, to get more information on an oratorical contest, how do we do that? You can go to www.pwcacdst.org. Okay. Yes. I think we have our mission here. <laughs> um, any last words? Please come out. I love and it. And support the event. As um, Penny said, that it is an amazing program to see the hard work that these kids go through through a six month period mm. to participate, to compete. Because what they do is they compete in their high each of their high schools. Oh, wow. Then each of the high schools have to select at least one student finalist to go compete in the regional wow. and from there then three are selected from the middle school and three are 
selected from the high school to speak in front of a crowd of 3,000 people. And one thing, one more thing more I want to mention is that it's being held at the Hilton Memorial Chapel on MLK Day. Wonderful. That's so if you're looking for any uh, MLK program to support on his birthday, please come out to this program. And I can assure our views, viewers out there, I've been to it, and it is absolutely wonderful. Thank you both for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up next, and I hope that you found this very inspiring, and coming up next, we'll be talking with our Ambassador Delisi. Well, welcome to the show, Ambassador Thank Lucy. Thank you, Ingrid. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's today. great to have you here. Well, I always like to start out, how did you start your career? How did I start my career? I came across an ad in the Wall Street Journal uh -uh. saying that the, the United States Department of State was looking for foreign service officers and you had to take a test. And I was a young man in law school trying to think what the future might hold. I was interested in diplomacy and diplomatic history. I took the exam. And fortunately for me, I made it through the process. It's a, it was a fairly lengthy process at the time. And about a year and a half later, I was offered a position, and the rest, you could say, is history. Wonderful. So what, did, what inspired you to become a diplomat? Well, you know, at the time, I was a young man out of law school looking for a job. That mm -hmm. was one of the mm -hmm. big things. Mm -hmm. But very quickly, after I joined the Foreign Service, I realized that the operational word there is service. It was about service to our nation, service to a global community, yes. service to a set of values and beliefs mm -hmm. that matter to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I realized this isn't just a job. Mm -hmm. This is, it's a career, it's a lifestyle, it's about who we are and what we believe in. And it became something that I was very, very proud to do. And wow. after 34 years of service, I realized I wouldn't have done it any differently. You, you would have done it. Now, tell us about your work as the ambassador. Oh, well, as an ambassador, you're, you represent our country. You represent, you're the personal representative of the mm -hmm. President of the United States, but you're doing everything. Wow. You go from one minute talking to presidents and the next minute you're talking to the youth of the country, trying to inspire them and give them a reason to look at the future with a different perspective to understand that the United States is there to be a partner and a friend and to jointly shape a world that we all want to live in. Mm. It's to support our citizens when they're visiting countries. It's to support U.S. businesses when they're working there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's to sort through issues at times of life and death. In the fight against HIV AIDS, you become a you become a public health ambassador. Wow. You become a risk reduction ambassador when we looked at earthquakes in Nepal and yes. prepared for them. Yes. You become a peacemaker as we looked at conflicts throughout Eastern Africa when yes. I was ambassador in Uganda. We play a multitude of ro roles, but all of them come back to a simple question. Who is the United States? What do we care about in the world? And it is to again, advance and articulate those values and beliefs. Mm -hmm. That's our core job. And to inspire our team oh. to do exactly the same things. That's, that's powerful. Um, I want us to talk about your foundation, mm -hmm. Sorway, um, because that just really, you had your career and then you moved into another. It's, it's a whole new world. And the All world right. of nonprofits right. is very different than the world of diplomacy. But when I retired from the State Department, I had the opportunity to join the Sorway Foundation, which is committed and dedicated to serving the people of Nepal, helping to address both earthquake response, because they had devastating earthquakes, mm -hmm. as you know, mm -hmm. but also to prepare for the next one. Because the time to act isn't after the earthquake. When right, we all say, oh right. my God, what a horrible tragedy. Right, right. Let's, let's give $10, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing that's when good we thing. do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the time to act isn't when people are dead. The time to act is beforehand, when we have a chance to save lives. So the Sorway Foundation was created with all of this in mind, and for me, the opportunity to continue to serve, because that was, oh. as I say, 34 years. It was a oh, life of service. service. And to continue to serve, that's an important thing for me. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the chance to work with Sorway 
and to begin this process of engaging the people of Nepal. And this isn't about how are we going to save Nepal. Nepal doesn't need saving. Nepalis need partners who will work with them, not come in and tell them, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. We've got your answers, mm -hmm. because we don't. But we can join hands in partnership to help them build a future that they can face with confidence rather than fear. So that's what we seek to do at Sorway. And we're doing this in a broad, broad array of programs that we're engaged in. We're working to protect children who were orphaned in the earthquake. Yes, yes. We are working to provide shelter for those who remain homeless almost two years after the earthquakes. But there's still yes. hundreds of thousands of people who still need shelter. We are working to help prevent the trafficking of young women and girls yes. into sexual slavery. Oh my goodness. Because this remains a problem as well, and especially in earthquake affected areas of the country, they are so, so vulnerable. Yes. So we have programs that work in those areas. We are working with the Nepal Ambulance Service to the, for the first time to give them skilled medical technicians to ride in the ambulances. So it's no longer just a vehicle but it's actually an opportunity to save lives. Right. We've got, as I say, Ingrid, it's a wide array of programs right. because we know that while it is important to pre prepare for the next earthquake, mm -hmm. preparedness isn't just about building a strong house or a strong mm. school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's about building strong communities. Yes. It's about building a strong society. Yes. And that we have to do in partnership not as something we impose, but we listen and we work together with good partners that we trust mm -hmm. and believe in, and we empower them to make a difference for their own future and for the future of their children. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, it that's really what, is. That's what we're trying to do, at least. So you've been very successful. You've had a very successful diplomatic career and very successful working with the Sorway Foundation. What has been the key to your success? I think first of all, and what I've said to young people, because we've done a lot mm -hmm. of mentoring with young mm -hmm. people over mm -hmm. the years, you've got to work hard. Mm. Nothing just happens. But in addition to working hard, what I say to the young people at least is that I hope that they can find something about which they can feel passionately. Because if you have those things in your life that you truly care about, that you truly believe in, and if you are willing to bring hard work determination, and an ongoing commitment, you can make a difference. And this is the thing. And this is what drives me to keep on going, because I've seen that we can make a difference. We can touch people's lives. We can save lives. We can build better communities, better nations, a better world. Whether we are doing this within our own families, mm -hmm. within our neighborhood, our community, within a state, within a nation, however, and wherever our contribution can be made, we make it, but we have to try. And this is the bottom line, it. because we look at the challenges, mm -hmm. and they're very mm -hmm. daunting. And they're daunting. But we're never going to solve them if we don't try. Mm. Maybe we won't succeed, but I know we won't succeed if we don't try. We have to make there the effort. So that's. That would be my message, that we have to try. We, we bring the try. passion and the commitment and the energy, and it's amazing what we can achieve. Okay. Well, Ambassador Lacey, thank you so much for being on the show. Ingrid, it's a pleasure. And I hope our viewers will stay right there because Ambassador Delisa has brought us a wonderful video about the work that he's doing in Nepal. I think you're going to get really excited about that and find a way to get involved. Thank you. Coming up next, also, we'll be talking with Alyssa Hicklin and Isis Wallace, and they will answer the question, who was Dr. Martin Luther King? Hello, my name is Scott DeLisi. For the past 34 years, I have served our nation as a career diplomat, including as United States Ambassador to Nepal. That beautiful country enchanted me with its warm and gracious people, its diverse cultures, and the majestic beauty of the Himalayas. Nepal is also a country in peril, however. Sitting atop two shifting tectonic plates, 
experts tell us a massive earthquake is inevitable. The only question is when. We all remember the horror of Haiti's disastrous earthquake in 2010. What lies ahead for Nepal will be even worse. It will be more dangerous, more devastating, and more tragic. The Kathmandu Valley will suffer hundreds of thousands of deaths and injuries, and over a million people will be left homeless. We can help to lessen the risks, but we must act and act now. For me, that means retiring and volunteering to co-lead the Kathmandu Fire Truck Expedition. The expedition will bring urgently needed fire engines, ambulances, control vehicles, and other equipment to the five million people of the valley, who today are served by only five ancient fire trucks. Unfortunately, the clock is running on our effort to bring this much-needed equipment by road from Calcutta to Kathmandu before the quake strikes. The expedition is privately funded and is being organized by Sir Ranulph Fiennes and Michael Cobol. The roads hold dangers, the logistics are challenging, but the plan is sound and the support of our many partners is heartfelt and inspirational. It will be quite a trip. On my first day of retirement, I'll take up this challenge along with people who care. The Kathmandu Fire Truck Expedition may sound like the ultimate road trip, but it's actually much more than that. It's a chance to make a difference. It's a chance to save lives. And it's a chance to give the people of this beautiful country the opportunity to help themselves. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Welcome back to the show. Hi. Isis, Alyssa. All right, so Dr. King, I just want you to give me a fun fact about Dr. King. Tell me something. Um, he was a civil rights activist. Fun fact. Because of him, black people are able to live in houses and go on buses and everything. Wonderful, great thing. Would you like to meet Dr. King if he was alive? What would, um, what would I, uh, if if I uh, was it possible, I would, but I some I actually wouldn't because um, there could be people that don't, so there's a lot of people that don't like him, so, and I wouldn't want to be around him. There's some negative energy sometimes around wow. him. Wow, wow. That's, that's very interesting. Well, you're very conscious of, of various things. Um, so when you think about Dr. King, what's it, can you give me another fun fact about Dr. King? Um, what about um, was what about the Nobel Pri Peace Prize? He was the youngest to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Oh my goodness, I believe <laughs> that's correct. Excellent, excellent. Um, so does anyone know the name of his speech? I had a dream speech. Oh, all right, give these girls the prize. Okay. Um, have you ever heard the speech? Have you ever heard? Uh, I've I heard. Have a dream I've heard um, bits, um, parts of it. Um, when I looked it up on YouTube on his birthday, on a Martin Luther King Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've and they play it on the news sometimes. So if you could write a letter, like virtually, what would you just say to, to tell him thank you? What I would, you say? would just tell him that I really appreciate that he did that for us because most people don't just stick with their friends and do what their friends say. And he was conscious and he did what he thought what was right. And I really appreciate that he did that. Wow, that's powerful. Um, I would say thank you, and because that well, white people and black people can live in peace, even though the things that are happening now in society, um, we still um, there's still not as um, discrimination as there was back then. Oh, that's a great way to to say that, and a wonderful way to look at it because you know it's all about peace. And it's always about us holding hands together and helping one another. And I think that's what Dr. King kind of taught us. Yes. In his, particularly in his speech and all of his hard work. 
can you imagine? Yeah. He was just in his 30s working, wow. working so hard for us. He's amazing. I have to thank both of you all for being on the show. Keep up the good work. And you know what? I have to tell you that Dr. King, I am sure, is smiling down on you and saying, you are living the dream, and I hope you will continue working hard and doing the good things to make his dream come true. Thank you for being on the show. And I would like to thank Lorraine Jackson, Penny Cortez, Ambassador Lisi, Isis Walls, Alyssa Hicklin for being fantastic guests. Our quote this time is from Michelle Obama. Success isn't about how much money you make, it's about the difference you make in people's lives. Thank you for watching Ingrid's World. And don't forget to friend us on Facebook and follow Ingrid's World VA in Twitter and Instagram for instant Ingrid World news. So stay in touch and be a blessing to someone today. This episode of Ingrid's World is underwritten by the Prince William County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. This year marks the 32nd year that Prince William County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated has hosted the Martin Luther King Jr. Day program for Prince William County, Manassas City, and Manassas Park in Northern Virginia. The cornerstone of this event is a youth oratorical competition during which three middle three high school students will speak on the year's topic, what the world needs now. Students will consider the state of the current world and their community and provide their thoughts on what the world needs. The program will feature performances by the MLK Community Choir. So join us on January 16th, 2017 at the Hilton Memorial Chapel at 11 a.m. The snow date is January 21st, 2017 at 11 a.m. You're guaranteed to leave inspired by the optimistic words and music of our youth. For more information, please see www.pwcacdst.org.